Level 1. The Cloud Believer. Absolute Garbage Tier. Every level of internet infrastructure understanding explained. Level 1. The Cloud Believer. The absolute bottom of the barrel. People who think the internet is literally a fluffy cloud floating in the sky. You know who I'm talking about. These are the people who unironically think the cloud means their data just exists in some magical digital dimension. They've never questioned it once in their life. They see those little cloud icons on their phone and think, yeah, that's exactly how it works. It's stored in a cloud somewhere. Cut the quants off, bro. The internet is not a bubble cloud. And you know what the craziest part is? The people who drew those cloud diagrams? They were more concerned about job security than education. They literally made it confusing on purpose, so you'd never understand what's actually happening. These cloud believers think satellites are doing all the heavy lifting too. Oh yeah, the satellite just beams everything down to my phone wrong. Dead wrong. If we actually use satellites for all internet traffic, you'd be waiting like 10 seconds every time you clicked a link? The satellite sits 22,000 miles above Earth's equator, which means your data would have to travel 44,000 miles round trip. That's called latency, and it's absolutely unacceptable for basically everything you do online. But no one at this level knows any of that. They just tap their screen and assume magic happens. If you're at level 1, you probably think your Instagram post gets uploaded to a literal cloud made of water vapor. You're physically incapable of understanding that the internet is actually a wire, a wire buried in the ground, fiber optics, copper cables, occasionally satellite for rural areas, but fundamentally it's just a wire connecting computers. How do you even function at this level? Like genuinely, how do you send an email without understanding that it's traveling through physical infrastructure? You just click send and pray. And here's the thing, if you started learning about internet infrastructure today with zero experience, you'd instantly be better than everyone at level 1. That's how bad this tier is. Fix your posture by the way. You're way too hunched over staring at your phone not knowing how any of it works. Level 2. The Wi-Fi expert. Still trash. All right. Level 2. The Wi-Fi expert. Slightly better than level 1, but we're still firmly in trash territory. These people know the internet involves routers and Wi-Fi, and they think that makes them tech savvy. Oh, I reset my router when the internet's slow. I know all about this stuff. No you don't, bro. You know how to unplug something and plug it back in. Congratulations, you've mastered the same skill as a toddler with a lamp. Level 2 people think the internet stops at their router. They genuinely believe their Netgear box in the living room is doing all the real work. Like the router is just magically creating the internet internet out of thin air. They don't understand that their router is just a translator. It's taking signals from the actual internet, which is that wire we talked about, and broadcasting it wirelessly in their house. Here's what kills me about this level. These are the people who think buying a faster router will fix their garbage internet. They drop $300 on some gaming router with eight antennas that looks like a spaceship, and then wonder why Netflix still buffers. It's because your ISP is throttling you, genius. The router doesn't create bandwidth. It just distributes what you're already getting. And don't even get me started on the Wi-Fi password experts. Oh yeah, I secured my network with WPA2 encryption. I'm basically a hacker now. No, you clicked a button in a settings menu that someone else programmed. You have zero understanding of what's happening behind that password. But here's the thing that really separates level 2 from level 1. At least these people know the internet involves physical devices. They understand there's a box involved. They've looked at the back of their router and seen the ethernet ports. That's something. It's not much, but it's something. The problem is, they think that's where the story ends. They think the internet is just their house, plus everyone else's house, all connected through routers. They have no concept of the massive infrastructure that actually makes the internet function. The data centers, the fiber optic cables, the internet exchange points, the undersea cables connecting continents, none of that exists in their mental model. You know what's crazy? These people will argue with you about internet speeds. They'll be like, well actually 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi is faster than 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, no, everybody knows that. But do you know why? Can you explain radio frequency propagation? No. You saw it on a Reddit post three years ago. Level 2 is best described as confident ignorance. Just enough knowledge to be annoying at parties. Level 3. The ISP Understander. Mid-tier. Level 3. The ISP Understander. Welcome to mid-tier, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're getting somewhere, but don't get too excited. This is what I call elevated mid. I'm trademarking that, by the way. Don't steal it, please. These people understand that internet service providers exist and actually do something. They know Comcast, Verizon, AT&T, all those companies that everyone loves to hate. They understand their internet comes from outside their house through a wire that the ISP owns. Level 3 knowledge is best suited as background understanding. Not good, not bad, just pure cardboard. These people can have a conversation about internet infrastructure without sounding like complete idiots, but they're not going deep. They know the ISP provides the connection, they know there's probably a local hub or something nearby, and that's about where it ends. Here's what separates level 3 from the trash tiers below. They actually understand the internet is a distributed system. Multiple networks owned by different organizations all linked 
link together. That's huge, right? They get that the internet isn't one giant network owned by one company. It's thousands of smaller networks that agreed to connect with each other through peering agreements. But, and this is important, they couldn't explain what a peering agreement actually is if their life depended on it. They just know it's a thing that exists. They've heard the term. Maybe they read a Reddit ELI 5 post about it once. That's the ceiling for level 3. The ISP understander knows about servers too. They know that when you go to a website, you're connecting to a server somewhere. Two computers connected to the internet can communicate. That's the whole point. But ask them where that server is physically located and they'll just shrug. Uh, probably in California? Maybe Amazon owns it? They have zero concept of data centers. They don't know that massive warehouse-sized buildings packed with tens of thousands of servers are spread all over the world. They don't know Google has data centers on multiple continents, so your YouTube video doesn't have to travel from California every single time. They just think, server exists somewhere. Internet works. Cool. And here's where it gets funny. Level 3 people love talking about the backbone of the internet. Oh yeah, there's like a main backbone that everything connects to, but they couldn't tell you what that backbone actually is. They don't know it's literally massive fiber optic cables called Tier 1 networks that span continents. They don't know about undersea cables running along the ocean floor, connecting countries. They just know there's a backbone somewhere doing important stuff. This level is perfectly adequate for normal human life. You can work in tech at this level, you can have opinions about net neutrality, you can complain about your ISP throttling your connection, and actually understand what you're complaining about, but you're not special. You're just competent. And competent is boring. Level 4. The protocol knower. Actually decent. Alright, up until this point it's been pretty surface level stuff. Time to separate the casual browsers from people who actually paid attention level 4. The protocol knower. This is where things get actually decent. These people understand TCP slash IP. They know the internet isn't just wires and routers. It's a system of protocols that make communication possible. Transmission control protocol and internet protocol. They can explain, at least roughly, how data gets broken into packets and reassembled at the destination. That's real knowledge right there. Here's what makes level 4 different. They understand the internet has layers. Not physical layers, but logical layers. The application layer, the transport layer, the network layer. They know HTTP operates on top of TCP, which operates on top of IP. That's depth. That's actually understanding the architecture instead of just knowing things exist. The protocol knower can tell you what happens when you type a website into your browser. Your computer sends a request to a DNS server to translate the domain name into an IP address. The DNS server is like a phone book for the internet. It tells your computer where to actually find the server you're looking for. Then your computer establishes a TCP connection with that server, sends an HTTP request, and the server responds with the web page data. Boom, that's how websites work. But here's where level 4 still falls short. They understand the protocols, but they don't really understand the physical infrastructure behind it all. They know packets are being routed across the internet, but they couldn't tell you exactly how. They don't know about BGP, the border gateway protocol that actually makes routing decisions between autonomous systems. They just know packets find their way somehow, and people are going to get mad that I'm putting protocol knowers at only level 4. But remember bro, we're basing this off complete infrastructure understanding. Knowing protocols is great, but it's only half the picture. You can understand TCP slash IP perfectly, and still have no idea how undersea cables work, or what happens inside an internet exchange point. These people also understand latency and bandwidth on a technical level. They know latency is the time it takes for data to travel from point A to point B. They know bandwidth is how much data can be transferred in a given time period. They understand why satellite internet has high latency because of that 44,000 mile round trip we talked about earlier. That's solid knowledge. Level 4 is where IT professionals live. Network administrators, software developers, anyone who needs working knowledge of how internet communication actually functions, you're respectable at this level. You can troubleshoot real problems. You can optimize network performance, but you're not an expert on the infrastructure itself. You're an expert on how to use the infrastructure. Very important distinction to make. Level 5. The Infrastructure Realist. Good territory. Level 5. The Infrastructure Realist. Now, we're in good territory. This is where knowledge meets reality. These people understand the internet isn't some abstract concept. It's actual physical infrastructure spanning the entire planet. They know about the undersea fiber optic cables connecting continents over 750,000 miles of cable running along the ocean floor, carrying 99% of international data traffic. That's not a metaphor. That's literal cables you could theoretically touch if you dove deep enough. The infrastructure realist knows about data centers in detail. They understand that Google, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, all these companies have massive warehouse facilities filled with server racks. These aren't just buildings with some computers in them. We're talking facilities that consume as much electricity as small cities. They're strategically placed around the world to minimize latency and maximize redundancy.
redundancy. Here's what really separates Level 5 from everything below it. They understand how data actually travels across continents. When you watch a YouTube video, that data is coming from the nearest Google data center to your location. It travels through fiber optic cables as pulses of light, light signals bouncing through glass at nearly the speed of light. The cable connects to an internet exchange point where different networks meet and exchange traffic. From there, it routes through your ISP's network to your house. They also know about Tier 1 networks. These are the big boys, the backbone providers like AT&T, Verizon, Level 3, that own massive fiber optic networks spanning entire continents. These networks don't pay anyone for internet access. They peer with each other as equals. That's what keeps the whole system running. Below them are Tier 2 and Tier 3 networks that have to pay for transit. Level 5 people understand internet exchange points, or IXPS. These are physical locations where different networks interconnect. Hundreds of ISPS and content providers meet in one building and run cables to each other. This is where peering agreements actually happen in the physical world. Without IXPS, every network would need direct connections to every other network, which would be impossible. But here's the controversial take. Level 5 is good, maybe even great for most purposes, but it's still not complete understanding. These people know how the infrastructure works, they know about the physical components, but they're missing the coordination layer. They don't fully understand how internet governance actually functions. They know the internet isn't owned by anyone, but they couldn't explain ICANN, IANA, or how IP address allocation actually works. The infrastructure realist can tell you exactly what happens when a shark bites an undersea cable. Backup routes kick in, traffic gets rerouted through redundant cables, service continues with minimal disruption. They understand the internet was designed to survive infrastructure failures. That's military-grade resilience built into the system from day one. This is the level where network engineers and infrastructure specialists operate. You're legitimately knowledgeable at level 5. You could work for an ISP or a data center. You understand the big picture, but you're not at the cutting edge yet. Level 6, the governance expert. Great, but not perfect. Level 6, the governance expert. And suddenly we get a lot less mainstream. This is where the real specialists live. These people understand that the internet isn't just infrastructure and protocols. It's a coordinated system with actual governance. They know about ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. This is the organization that manages the DNS root zone, IP address allocation, and protocol parameters. Without ICANN, the internet as we know it wouldn't function. The governance expert knows ICANN performs the IANA functions. IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, is responsible for global coordination of IP addressing systems and domain names. When you register a domain name, somewhere in that chain, ICANN is involved. When your ISP gets a block of IP addresses to distribute to customers, they got it from a regional internet registry, who got it from ICANN through IANA. Here's what's crazy about Level 6 understanding. These people know the internet isn't owned by any government, but it was managed by the U.S. Department of Commerce through NTIA until 2016. Then the IANA stewardship transition happened, and control was handed to the global multi-stakeholder community. That's a huge deal. The internet literally became more independent. They understand how IP addresses are actually allocated. There are five regional internet registries, RIRS, that distribute IP addresses in different parts of the world, ARIN for North America, RIPE NCC for Europe, APNIC for Asia Pacific, LACNIC for Latin America, and AFRINIC for Africa. These organizations follow policies developed through bottom-up consensus processes involving their communities. Level 6 people also know about the standards bodies that actually define how internet protocols work. The IETF, Internet Engineering Task Force, develops the technical standards. The IAB, Internet Architecture Board, provides oversight and architectural guidance. The W3C defines web standards like HTML and CSS. These organizations work together to maintain compatibility across the entire global internet. But here's where even level 6 falls short of complete mastery. They understand governance and coordination, but they're not the ones actually building and maintaining the physical infrastructure they know how the system is organized. But they couldn't physically lay an undersea cable or configure a BGP router at a tier 1 network. Knowledge is not the same as execution. The governance expert understands the multi-stakeholder model. Governments, private sector, civil society, technical community, all working together to develop internet policy. No single entity controls the internet, but everyone has a voice in how it evolves. That's what makes the internet resilient. This level is where policy people, domain registrars, and internet governance specialists operate. You command respect from anyone who actually understands how the internet functions, but you're still missing that final piece. Level 7. The Infrastructure Architect GOAT Status Level 7. The Infrastructure Architect GOAT Status The absolute pinnacle of internet infrastructure understanding. These people have everything. They understand the physical infrastructure 
infrastructure, the protocols, the governance, and most importantly, they can actually build and maintain the systems that keep the internet running. They're the engineers at Tier 1 Networks, configuring BGP routers that handle hundreds of terabits per second. They're the people designing and deploying undersea cable systems that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. They're the data center architects planning facilities that house hundreds of thousands of servers. The infrastructure architect sees the internet in multiple dimensions simultaneously. They understand how a single YouTube video request triggers DNS lookups, packet routing decisions across multiple autonomous systems, light pulses traveling through thousands of miles of fiber optic cable, server load balancing decisions in data centers, TCP connection establishment, HTTP request processing, and video encoding optimization, all happening in milliseconds. They know exactly how routers make forwarding decisions. Every time a packet reaches a router, it examines the destination IP address and checks its routing table. The router adds its own IP address as a layer, forwards the packet to the next hop, and the process repeats until the packet reaches its destination. Then the reverse happens on the way back. They can configure these systems at scale. Level 7 people understand redundancy and resilience at every layer, multiple undersea cables between continents. So if one gets cut, traffic automatically reroutes multiple data centers for every major service. So if one fails, others take over seamlessly. Multiple peering agreements at internet exchange points, so traffic always has alternate paths. They design systems that survive earthquakes, power outages, equipment failures, and even deliberate attacks. The infrastructure architect knows how packet switching makes the internet efficient. When you download a file, it's broken into packets, each containing identification information and the actual content. Each packet can take a different route through the internet. If one path gets congested, remaining packets dynamically reroute through less congested paths. When all packets arrive, they're reassembled in the correct order. This is why the internet works so well compared to traditional circuit switched networks. They understand latency at a molecular level. Light traveling through fiber optic cable moves at roughly two-thirds the speed of light in a vacuum because of the refractive index of glass. This means there's a physical limit to how fast data can travel. You can't beat physics. That's why game servers need to be geographically distributed. That's why content delivery networks exist. The infrastructure architect accounts for these constraints when designing systems. These people know how to optimize the entire stack. They understand how different protocols interact. They know when to use TCP versus UDP. They know how DNS caching reduces lookup times. They know how any cast routing directs traffic to the nearest server. They know how edge computing reduces latency by processing data closer to users' complete mastery. Level 7 is where the legends operate. The people who built the internet backbone, the engineers who designed Google's global infrastructure, the architects who planned AWS data centers, the specialists who lay and maintain undersea cables. These people are responsible for keeping billions of people connected every single day. If you want to understand what makes internet infrastructure so robust and powerful, talk to someone at level 7. They'll blow your mind with details you never even knew existed. But if you already understand all of this, congratulations. You're in the top 0.1% of people who actually know how the internet works. Now go watch this next one. I guarantee you'll disagree with at least three of my rankings.